In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural galvanized steel material in Blender. If you'd like to help support me, you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store and my Patreon. I'll have the links in the description. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my procedural materials. And you can also check out my procedural material playlist on YouTube if you'd like to learn how to create all of my procedural materials. All of the links are in the description. And then also before we start, I wanted to thank Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Upload and preview your own 3D models on Sketchfab. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can preview 3D models online in your browser. You can also purchase models and assets from Sketchfab's model store. You can use the model inspector to preview the wireframe, matte cap, textures, and more before you purchase. You can also apply to sell your own 3D models. Check out Sketchfab with the link below. All right, now to preview the procedural material, I just added an icosphere and a monkey head, and I just subdivided them and shaded them smooth. And then also to get some very nice lighting, I added in this Machine Shop 02 1K HDR, and this is from polyhaven.com. So I just added in this HDRI in the world to get some very realistic lighting and reflections on our metal. And if you'd like to download this HDRI, it's a free HDRI, and I'll have the link in the description. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled, you can click on edit and then open up the user preferences and then if you go over to the add-ons tab you can search for the node wrangler add-on and just check mark the node wrangler add-on and i'll show you how to use it in the video so i have the 3d viewport right here and the shader editor right here so i'm just going to click on new to add a new material all right so to start off i'm going to press shift a and i'm going to go to the search and i'm going to search for a voronoi texture and let's drop this down here and then let's also go into rendered mode by pressing z moving your mouse up and letting go now i want to preview the voronoi texture texture so I'm going to hold down the control and shift key and click and that is using the node wrangler add-on so it's going to preview different nodes if you control shift and click on the nodes so just control shift and click on the Voronoi texture and then also make sure the Voronoi is selected and I'm going to press control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping now we don't actually need this mapping node so I can press X to delete it with it selected and then I want to plug the object up to the vector and that way the Voronoi texture will be placed more evenly around the object object. Now I actually want to control shift and click on the Voronoi texture twice so that we can see the color instead of the distance. So you can now see that the material has some little chunks of color, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it from this one down here with the E. I'm going to change it to the bottom one that starts with an M. I have no idea how to pronounce this, but I'm going to change it to this bottom one here. And you can see now that I've done that, those chunks of color are still there, but they have some little imperfections and some sharp spots. And then I'm also going to change this scale here up to 60 so that it has much more detail. All right, so I can now use this texture data and I can put that into the roughness to change the roughness of the metal. So I'm gonna take this color right here and I can stick it into the roughness. Let's just maybe bring these a bit closer and then I can control shift and click on the principle to preview it. Now this isn't really looking like metal right now. So to make it look more like metal, I'm gonna turn the metallic value all the way up to one so it looks much more like metal. And then I will also take the base color and I'm going to turn that down a little bit just so that it's a bit more of a gray color. So if you zoom in here, you can see that the Voronoi texture is definitely affecting the roughness because some parts are more shiny and some parts are more rough. The problem with this is that it's too contrasty and so I want to control how rough and how shiny it is. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and we can search for a color ramp node. Let's click on the color ramp and I'm gonna drop it right in here. So if I control Shift and click twice on the Voronoi, you can see right now it's just different colors. But if I now control Shift and click on the color ramp, it's now converting it just to black and white and we can now change the different colors from black to white and the different colors in the color ramp will affect how rough the metal is. So I'm going to control shift and click back on the principled so I can preview it. So I'm going to take this black tab and I'm going to turn it up quite a bit. And when I start to turn it up, when I make it more and more light, you can see that now the metal is much more rough. But that's a little bit too rough, so I'm just going to bring it down somewhere around here. So you can see it is a little bit shiny in some areas. And then I'm going to click over on the white tab and I'm going to turn this white tab down to make the lighter areas a bit darker so they're a little bit more shiny. So I'll bring them down to something like that. Now when I was creating this material, I did play around a lot with these colors. So if you'd like to use the exact same colors that I'm using, you can click on this first one here, the darker one, and you can click over here on the hue saturation value, the HSV. And then if you turn the value up and down, that's going to change the brightness of it. So for this first one, I'm going to make the value a value of 0.192. 
So that is the first one, this darker one over here. And then for this one, this one is slightly lighter. So if you click on that, open up this one right here and just go over to the hue saturation value. I'm going to change the value to a 0.349. So now I also want this texture to contribute to the bump just a little bit. So I'm going to take this color and I'm going to plug it into the normal. Now this is color data and this is normal data because this is yellow and this is purple. So we need to convert this to normal data. So to convert it, I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a bump node. And let's just drop the bump node right in here between the color and the normal. And then because this is color data, I actually want to plug the color into the height and then it'll convert it to normal data. And now if you zoom in here, you can see that it looks like those little pieces are Kind of popping out now that is way too strong so on the strength here i'm going to turn this down to a point 0.05. So it's much less strong, but if you zoom way in there, you can see just on the edges, it looks like it's kind of popping out a little bit and there's just a small texture there. So that's looking pretty good, but I do just want to give a tiny little bit of noise over this metal. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a, another noise texture. And we're just going to put the new noise texture right down there. And then I can plug the object up to the vector. And then we can control shift and click on the noise texture to preview it. So I'm going to turn the scale to 20. And then I'm also going to turn the detail all the way up to 16 so it has a lot of detail so now what I want to do is just plug this into the bump just to give it a tiny little bit of bump all over so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna press shift D and I'm gonna duplicate that bump and I want to drop it down here so you can just have the normal go through the normal so now we have this extra height value that we can add data into so I'm gonna take this factor right here from the noise texture and I'm gonna plug it into the bump and then I can just control shift and click back on the final material and you can see that that noise texture is just adding a bunch of little noise all over the metal. Now that is a little bit too strong for me. You could have it kind of rough like that if you want to, but I'm going to turn this strength value on the second bump. I'm going to turn the strength down to a value of 0.03. And that way it's even more subtle. So it's still there. You can still see there's some noise all over, but it is more subtle. And there we have it. So there is the finished rendered material. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And again, if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube channel, you can purchase this procedural material on my Gummerd and Patreon, and you can also check out my Blender procedural material packs if you'd like to purchase more of my materials, or you can check out my procedural material playlist on YouTube if you'd like to learn how to create more procedural materials. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in a future tutorial.